I'm Hans Ray and join me on my next urban mountain bike adventure in Mexico City, home of the harmonious chaos, trendy meets tradition, all infused with progress and antiquity, surrounded by beautiful nature. I'll be joined by Mao, my local guide, and no other than the legendary Rob Warner. So let's get gritty in Mexico City. Today is day one of our Mexico City adventure and we're, gonna, we're on the outskirts actually, on the city near Santa Fe and we're going to ride our bikes all the way into the center. With me is Mao de Avila, he's our local guide and expert. Mao. And with us is also Cedric Tassan, he's our cameraman. We've done many adventures together, he's an adventurer himself and um, of course he has to ride a bike. Cedric, you're going to show us a little bit how the work is to yeah. film all this stuff. We will see. Uh all the, the cameras in my backpack, but you know, it's the first time for me in Mexico, so I'm very excited to discover this city because it's a huge city. I know, I can't wait to, to see it. Let's, let's do it. Yes! to be here with aunt. For me it's very interesting to film that kind of trip because it's a mix between the, the discovery, the, the cities and also some epic riding so I hope it will be an epic film. Hey guys, I'm Mao de Avila. I live here in Mexico City and I guide, coach and build parks and trails. I grew up riding bikes and watching Hans and his videos because of my father which was a pioneer here in Mexico. So I'm really glad that he's here and you guys are here and doing this big adventure. One of the incredible things about Mexico City is how wealth and poverty coexist literally side by side. For example, we started the day in the northwestern outskirts of the city, which is extremely poor. And then, in a heartbeat, after riding under a concrete overpass, here we are in wealthy Santa Fe, with its towering buildings, the mirrored facades reflecting the glittering sun. All right. We're standing into the center of Mexico City now. There comes the traffic. Yeah. All right, just like what I was thinking in Mexico City, traffic and cars everywhere. It's pretty chaotic here. We have to be careful. <laughs> How's it? Uh, 22 million people, what do you expect? Traffic <laughs> everywhere. Oh, it's more dangerous here than on the trail. <laughs> Lots of cool little neighborhood. Traffic and nature, everything. I love it. <laughs> This 
see it's a little trail in the third section of Chapultepec forest. We're on e-bikes, which is awesome. So it's been fun. Oh yeah. Guadalupe, nice view over Mexico City. Avenida Reforma, famous bypass, right in the center of town, very cool. Nice. Street tacos, way to go when you're in Mexico. Is that the way to eat here in Mexico City? Street tacos? Yeah, quesadillas, cheese and corn basically. That's a traditional tortilla. She's making making it right now, the mask, and then cooking it. So yeah, it's as legit as it gets. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We are cruising down the Paseo de la Reforma. Up ahead is one of the city's most famous landmarks, the Angel of Independence. We have the same colon in Paris, named La Bastille. Oh yeah? Actually, the Mexican president that built this, Porfirio Diaz, he was obsessed with France. So he actually ordered it from the one of La Bastille. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. But I'm gonna ride up there and ride up the stairs. This is cool, we are right here. The city is amazing and it's really a big contrast between the rich and the poor. There's slums here. Yeah. where over a, a million people live in and in overall there's probably four or five million people living in slums in Mexico City but then you see areas they look like Beverly Hills yeah 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 They're getting ready for a protest here and once again we are in the middle of it. Bella oh. <laughs> Artes. Yeah, Bella Artes, this is the Palace of Fine Arts fans and they have operas here, theater plays, and there's a classical music school. Let's roll down. This is like an old, biggest temple they used to have right in the center of town. 
later it was built over, they built all these churches and cathedrals on top of it to kind of make it disappear. But this is some incredible architecture and that was an awesome day today, man. How are we going to get back now, with an Uber? Uh, a chopper is going to take a chopper. Let's have a drink. Yeah, let's have a all drink. Right. We deserve it. Good. Cerveza. <laughs> too bad on the e-bike it's actually easier than walking would be at this altitude they are literally the greatest invention to mankind since the spaceship we have rob warner join us and we are on our way to climb into the crater of the volcano and then we're gonna have one heck of a downhill today top of Nevado de Toluca volcano and we got none other than the legendary Rob Warner with us he made it minus his bike he doesn't have a bike so we almost got him a donkey but we got him a loner bike today but hey we are here it's gonna be a heck of a day man it is it's already been a heck of a day getting here what are we 4200 meters yeah and we're gonna go higher I feel strange at the best of times today I feel even stranger and we're in the it's middle up here. we are in the middle of a crater this is the crater lake the Lago de Sol and the Lago de Luna is right over there yeah this is an as you said Hans a really amazing place really sacred this used to be a volcano and it blew off thousands and thousands of years ago but humans have been using this route to get to other towns and they made sacrifices and there's even been found a lot of treasures here so gold rob place. gold we're gonna get rich today i tell you what if we're up here too long i'll be a sacrifice you'll be <laughs> leaving behind <I> <laughs> Warner has been around mountain biking forever. He was actually the first Brit who ever won a downhill World Cup and after his racing career he became the voice of mountain biking worldwide. He is the commentator for all the World Cups and I have to say I'm super stoked to have him here with me on this adventure. And I gotta say I'm super stoked mate because when I was a kid me and my brother grew up watching hands no way ray riding out of his house and sliding down to the street so to be on one of your trips is like a dream come true for me Sometimes, even on an e-bike, the terrain isn't rideable and e-bikes are heavy. Thankfully, we have walk mode. Press a switch and we get a little assistance pushing our bikes up the rocky steeps. Yeah, I'm feeling alright now because I've been sat here for five minutes, but coming up the other side, it was like meant me a real battle because I was going up, the air was getting thinner 
but I knew that I had to get over the top to go down. And now, you know, I feel all right, I feel safe, and I'm gonna recover as I go down. job is so crazy because we are so high more than 4200 meters and I need to make a lot of footage change the lenses even during the riding you know if I want to have some different kind of frames and um, I'm pretty proud of this shout volcano were there it'd be almost perfect <laughs> it was touch and go for me once or twice but yeah that was an amazing day wasn't it, definitely hey? gritty i'm all gritty man and i ain't even been in mexico city <laughs> <laughs> Desiertos de los Leones is located just outside of the city and offers up to 100 trails. At the weekend, thousands of riders head here to shred the local mountains. Today, we've come here for day three to the Desperados Desierto. Bike Park. And I got my bike. My bike arrived in the night, so I'm pumped. This is going to be a sick day. It's on, dude. Let's it's get on. into it, man. Let's go. It'd be almost be better to pick it up and drop, yeah. jump it. Yeah. Super slow on the left. I saw that, dude. Oh, oh bastard. Wither has them. Oh my god.
Oh. Yeah, where did I land? Deep or not? No. Yeah, really far. You, you landed like about five feet in. Yeah, I was pulling a bit, but I sprinted hard. I mean, as long as you don't come up short, you ain't going to bust nothing, are you? Come right. up short. All right, we're just doing a little lunch stop here at a bike park. It's pretty awesome. It's like there's so many trails here and some pretty steep and technical stuff. We got to ride some really cool uh, technical trails with with Mao and Rob. And now we're going to do some technical climbing and go back up and hit a few more trails. I want to wander out of the valley. All right, we found uh, as a challenging technical climb, and that's so fun on the e-bikes. I love that kind of riding. And I think Rob is actually colorblind. I think he only sees yellow, as in boosts on the Shimano EPA 8. <laughs> I do have a gun up, but no, I just generally use boost, yeah. What a disaster. Hans Ray smoked me on the climb. I knew he would. Hey, let me pressure him. Oh, ha, ha. Ah! No! No! No way, Ryan! Oh, my God! Look at the animal! He didn't even put his foot down! Oh! Fair play to you, that was wild. And here he comes in through the Desiato bike park, he's looking like it's gonna be the fastest time of the day. Ronaldo crosses the line, look at the time! Woo! These trails are incredible, something for everyone and endless. I could recommend them to anyone and I'm stoked to see how popular mountain biking has become in Mexico. In part thanks to places like this. My wife Carmen and I started a non-profit charity, Wheels for Life, that gives bicycles to people in need of transportation in second and third world countries. We discovered a need here, so we decided to distribute a few bikes. So next stop is the local bike shop. Let's buy some bicycles. Piling in the new bikes. Make sure they're safe and ready to go. All right, now we have the bikes. We are headed back to the place where we started on day one, that primitive hut on the fringes of Santa Fe. We go through this tunnel under the freeway and on the other side is a different world. These people will really benefit from having a bike. They have no running water and so must carry it in using large heavy containers. We gave more bikes to indigenous people and hope to carry on giving more in the future. Would you like coffee or tea? Americano or espresso? I don't know how. Buenos dias, day number four, another urban state. We're starting today in front of Frida Kahlo's house. Have you ever heard of her? No. Mao, tell him who she is. <laughs> Sorry. So Frida Kahlo, she was one of the most famous and important artists. She was a painter. Uh, and she used to live here with his husband, Diego Rivera, one of the most famous painters in the world. No so way. It's going to be cool here in Coyoacán neighborhood. And let's go find the Marachi band. I'm all about a band. All I don't right. even know what a Marachi band is, but let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday morning in Mexico City, it's very quiet still on the streets. This will change soon. That's mad, isn't it? Huh? It's the best thing in the world. It's 
similar a lo que ve Damián. Y llega aquí ya. Ahí está el gol. Ahí está el gol. Ahí Yeah, yeah. Soccer and the A local delicacy are grasshoppers. Me gusta. Oh, they come to life once. What? You gotta be joking. You better have 10 quid. How is that, patron? I got more than 10 quid if you eat that. So how do you eat it? Oh my god. Just grab them and eat it. And it's just savage, isn't it? I can't look. Is it oh no! Joking, dude. <laughs> it's got its legs on and everything. Yeah, and the hair, the eyes. Good. 10 quid, dude. I'll give you 100 days. I can't believe you're eating that. You're not scared of weird food, are you? Oh, man, we would. You take sterling? A bet is a bet. Thank Silver you. Silver Jubilee, innit? It's worth even more this year. Yeah. Yeah. Dollar? You made 20 pesos, I made 10 pounds. Which is about 300,000 pesos. <laughs> <laughs> We are headed to the University City, where the Olympic Stadium is located. In the southern part of the city now, this is the university ground, isn't it? The yeah, main campus of UNAM, the National Autonomous University, one of the biggest and most important in Latin America. Is there 
there any meaning to these being all yeah. these colours and bright? This is now like a tourist attraction, but before, hundreds of years before, uh, these were called chinampas and they grew vegetables and stuff in the boats. And that's they use this canal to transport food and people and it's imagine this like an old Riviera, you know? There was no city. It was all nature. It was all a lake. It yeah. was all underwater. All the of Mexico city, city was a lake. Teotihuacan. That was That's all not right. Water. That's yeah. not. No way. What? Yeah, it in, was in, a huge lake. What? In mankind's time. It, yeah, yeah. You mean? The yeah. And they drained it. The Aztec, and they drained it. The, Az the Aztecs what? lived in the lake, and the Spanish drained the lake. The city is actually sinking because of it. No way. And why did the Spanish drain the lake to get rid of the Aztecs? No, to to get uh, to get real land. estate. To get real land. estate, yeah, land. Yeah. insane atmosphere this is my bike I rode on this whole trip we brought only e-bikes this time this is a class one pedal assist full suspension mountain bike with the Shimano EPA unit 500 watt battery so these bikes have been super fun the best way to explore this cool city It's day five and we are here, I can't even believe I'm here, the Teotihuacan Pyramids, this amazing site man, isn't it? Built before the Aztecs, they turned up and found it. You've got the Pyramid of the Sun, the Moon, the Feathered Serpent. I know. It is it's outrageous. Teotihuacan is amazing and later we're gonna actually find the gondola back in the city. It's gonna be a good day. What have you heard, Mao? So what I know is that this used to be like some really sacred ceremonial uh, place and that the emperor and pretty important people in the Aztec Empire lived here, but everyone else lived like in the outskirts. Yeah. This was not practical for everyone. And there was a lot of sacrifices being yeah. done here. Oh yeah. So that's Human why, sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, why yeah. we were thinking about sacrificing you to the gods maybe for, for better. I'm up for it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to the top. <laughs> Take your clothes off. <laughs> and there's our photographer. Hi. The Carmen Ray. Maybe we should sacrifice her to the gods. But she's a goddess already, so <laughs> maybe. Yeah. She's passed all the tests so far, but any blur, any out of focus. Oh, that's it. Off, off with my head. I think a lot of people assume that the Aztecs built Teotihuacan, but no, they only discovered this remarkable city in the 1400s. It was already there a long time before they arrived. Nobody knows who, why or when these structures were built originally. It's really cool to have this place all to ourselves. There's no tourists here yet. It's quite a huge site. I mean, it's, it's a couple kilometers long, you know, this avenue of the death where we're on right now and down there is the temple of the feathered serpent. It's not as big as the other pyramids, but it has a lot of really cool statues and stuff there and artifacts, but they found recently some underground tunnel systems 
so it's a very cool thing so they keep finding new stuff here and learning new things very very very, very nice Yeah, the e-bike, I mean, this has been an absolute blessing, the e-bike for this trip. Like, the fact we haven't had to rely on taxis, cars, public transport, total freedom, on them all day, don't wear you out. It's total freedom, isn't it, having it? I mean, literally, the e-bike is a gift from the gods. <laughs> We are headed back to the city via the notorious Eketapek. This neighborhood has a reputation for danger, and so we have to be on our guard, hyper-vigilant. Wow, this is a pretty sketchy neighborhood here. This is like the hood drop. But like, check this out. Gondolha, let's take it. <laughs> Above it. Above it all, let's go. Let's go. couldn't resist to catch a ride in one of these brand new telephericos, as the locals call them, to get a bird eye view of this colorful and hilly neighborhood where these gondolas serve as public transportation. Look at this, it's incredible. Look at, look how the city spreads all around the mountains in front of you like it's just as far as you can see it's just buildings like this this is this is mexico city this is the majority of mexico city this is how most people live here let's get into the go man i just have to be faster than you so <laughs> the last guy is the guy who gets in trouble yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey! We were a bit on the edge and decided best to get out of there really fast. Not wise to get stuck on a dead-end street or in credlock traffic with our expensive bikes and camera equipment. Big contrast in this part of Mexico City. I mean, we've seen it all this week from incredible volcanoes to really posh neighborhoods to the historic center and now the pyramids and last but not least, the rough part of town. <laughs> Good try, you found. Mexico City! That's one of the coolest things we did here. I've never experienced any place like it. You know, they always incredible. say chaos works and it's like here, yeah. the traffic and everything. And it is such a beautiful, like everything I expected, yeah. you know, came together. The people are so friendly yeah, definitely. and nice. And Perhaps the best thing for me is that I've been on a trip with Hans and Ray, man. And like I said at the start, I've always wanted to be on a trip with you. I've watched all your videos all my life. I'm a massive Charles fan, I'm a Charles rider myself, so to come and do one with you, mate, it's been really cool. You were the perfect guy in the hand. 